of the aim of this demonstration is to show you how to do a moderation analysis in SPSS. In this case, the dependent variable is word count, and I have two independent variables, uh, GSR and experience. They represent uh, the physiological arousal in response to a set of musical stimuli, and experience is an encoding of level of previous exposure to the type of music in these stimuli. So uh, a word count is a response measure. It's a, it's a verbal report of how how many emotions people feel in response to the items of music. So I'm hypothesizing that physiological arousal will enable me to predict responsiveness, verbal responsiveness, and so will previous experience of that type of music. I'm supposing that experience may or may not have an effect on how easy it is for people to verbalize their emotions in response to music. So the simplest sort of analysis would be to do a linear regression and to put the word count variable as uh, the dependent and these two as independents. And if I do that, I will see that there is a model. The model is significant, I mean, but neither of the two independent variables is independently significant. And in case that might be an instance of something multicollinearity, I can do a swift correlation and see whether that is the case. Uh, but it's not. There's no, that's not the explanation. It may well be, therefore, that there is some other effect. And I'm going to test for this by doing a moderation analysis. Uh, in order to do this, I need to first centralize the two variables and then multiply them together in order to get a third variable which I will use to test for moderation. There is a simple way to to do the centralization bit which is merely to uh, centralization describes the process of getting the finding the mean of the variable and then subtracting that mean from every va value of the variable. So you make a new variable whose mean is zero. Well in fact Multiplication by a constant value is not going to affect the analysis of this. So what I can do, uh, in fact, rather than centralize, I can actually take, I can standardize the variable, and that will do the same thing. Uh, so I'm going to actually put these variables in here. If I go into the descriptives menu, I have a function which will enable, enable me to save those values as variables. And I can see that that's now that's now happened. And the the last thing I've got to do is to compute a variable which is the product of those two. So I'm just going to call it moderator. And I'm going to make it equal to the product of the of the two z scores. And that has produced a moderator variable. Now, if I put all those now into the um, into the analysis, so I add that moderator variable, I will now see something interesting. First of all, the model summary is now predicting uh, 37. That's nearly 38% of the variance. Just for comparison, the previous one predicted 13%. So it looks as though we're doing the right thing. Now looking at the three variables, the GSR has dropped out. Interestingly, the variable is very important, but only via its moderator component. And in fact, it's so non-significant now, I'm tempted just to get rid of it and see what happens with a subsequent analysis with just those two. And yeah, experience the moderator variable uh, significant. And we've actually increased the ingested R squared to 39.5%. So that shows that moderation is going on. Now, how to interpret it? If I do some graphs of the responsiveness, 
against the GSR stimulus. Although GSR is not appearing as an independent predictor here to any significant extent, it is still influencing the value of the word count of the, the verbal responsiveness. And I'll show you how that is happening now. If we remember that what moderation is, moderation is when you have the effect of one variable on the dv depends on the level of the other variable. It's rather like the interaction effect in ANOVA. And to show this most dramatically, I'm going to actually look at the three values. This experience va variable actually was coded fairly simple-mindedly, only three va values, one, two, and three. I'm going to show you what happens when um, we look at those three variables, those three levels separately, and then we look at what GSR, at the relationship between GSR and, and the DV. So I'm going to split the file into separate values depending on the level of experience, which I do this. Now, when I go back and I'm actually going to do a scatter plot here to, to illustrate the relationship between word count and GSR. And this shows you the relationship. GSR, the physiological response, is down the bottom. And then this word count is, if you like, cognitive verbal response. And you can see that through the three values of experience, it's very different for, for the people who hadn't had much, if any, exposure to classical music. It seems that responsiveness, that the stronger the physiological arousal was, the less verbal they were in their description of the music. I know it's a it's a little bit of an outlier down here, but if we look at experience level two, moderate experience, there's really nothing going on there. There's another little individual here. But if we look at now level three, we see that the relationship between responsiveness and word count is going completely the opposite direction to what it was in experience one. And that is really what is giving us the large effect of, of the moderator variable. It's showing us that GSR on its own doesn't tell us anything because the effect of GSR on the DV is totally opposite depending on whether you're dealing with people who have prior experience to music or people with very little or no experience to music. So if you just do a simple multiple regression, you will lose the, you'll lose out on the effect of GSR. It, ex, it, it is important through its effect, its interaction effect on musical experience. And if you do a moderator analysis like this, you will be able to pull apart those two, those two effects. Thank you.